Hello everyone and welcome to Music Theory with Gim. In this installment we're going to be exploring a bit of Debussy's Violin Sonata, particularly the harmony of the first 14 measures. So let's take a listen to this selection and then we'll jump into the analysis. Alright, so what we're hearing from most of the first eight measures is G minor and C major back and forth. On beat two of measure eight, however, we hear a dramatic change to E flat minor followed by D9 starting in measure 10. And then from measure 12 onward, we hear G minor and C major once again. As you might have noticed, we're in the key of G minor, which means we know that G minor and D9 would be the 1 and 5 chords. And though you might have learned that the harmonic minor is used for harmony and the melodic minor is exclusively for melodies, we can think of this D9 as being sourced from G melodic minor. That said, it's also very common to actually just see dominant chords voiced with the 9th in French music anyways, especially from the likes of Debussy, Satie, Ravel, Faure, etc. Anyways, moving forward, we have C major, and we can label this as a major 4 chord. Diatonically, this chord would normally be of minor quality, yet here it does not. Instead, it's a very bright and powerful sounding chord following G minor because it uses the major 6th E. We can think of C major as coming from either G Dorian or G melodic minor. We know that it's not any sort of G major color because the melody clearly plays B flat atop the chord in measure 7, but either way, we're going to simply label this as a 4 chord. E flat minor is a minor flat 6 chord, and it's quite an interesting one, and that's for numerous reasons. Firstly, it's interesting in that it sounds E flat right after we have been lifted up by that major 6th E in C major. Additionally, it is a double chromatic median of C major as well as a chromatic median of G minor. In relation to C major, this relationship is very dark and is more immediate since we are hearing the two chords next to one another. This is similar to what we heard in Boussois from episode 1, only here we're not seeing it necessarily as a means to prolong C major. Instead, it is a dark, intense chord used to segue into D9, so it's like a predominant chord, but not entirely so because it also contains the leading tone F sharp, only it has been spelled as G flat. And with G minor set as the tonal center, we can potentially also hear E flat minor in relation to G minor on a sort of larger scale, which is why I refer to it as a chromatic median of G minor. And on top of all of this, there's something that's even more interesting, at least to me it is, and it's that we can find this harmony in harmonically in the G harmonic minor scale. You can build it with the flat 6, 7, and flat 3 scale degrees, only it would again be spelled with F sharp and augmented second rather than G flat the minor third. And it's easy to start to see how this harmony can be used to approach the 5 chord. The flat 6 scale degree readily resolves down to the 5, or in this case E flat to D. G flat is already sounding F sharp the leading tone, and B flat is a semitone away from the 5 chord's 5th A, or a whole step away from the minor 7th C. And you can even choose to suspend B flat over the 5 chord to give it a quasi sharp 5 augmented dominant sound, or use it as a 6 5 suspension. Either way, the minor flat 6 chord can potentially be a great expansion to your harmonic palette. So let's take a listen to a simple chord progression that makes use of this minor flat 6 and approaches it from a harmony other than the major 4 chord. You can also consider extending it with an augmented 6th, or in this case C sharp, to enhance the resolution to the root of the 5 chord D. And yeah, this is definitely not a concept you would regularly hear mentioned regarding augmented 6th chords because they are almost always taught as having major 3rds, but whatever. Another cool thing you can do with the minor flat 6 chord is think of it in relation to the minor 4 6 chord, or in other words, the minor 4 chord in first inversion. Anyways, we can directly substitute the chord or we can transform the minor 4 6 into the minor flat 6 chord. And 
lastly, I also want to talk about C major or the major four chord as a substitution for the minor four chord in that it will still carry that plagal or predominant air, it just won't have as strong of a pull when placed in first inversion. And like it does in Debussy's Violin Sonata, it will sort of brighten the mood of the overall minor tonality. And when used in conjunction with the 5-7 chord, you can think of both of them as stemming from the melodic minor pitch set. Anyways, here's an example of the major 4 chord placed in first inversion. Alright, so go out there and investigate these harmonies for yourself and see what they can offer you. Consider how they sound in conjunction with other diatonic chords such as the two half diminished or major flat three chords. And should you happen to have any thoughts or questions regarding this content or perhaps any requests for future explorations of Debussy, leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you for watching another episode of Music Theory with Gim.